One of those comments prompted a heckle, saying there's no such thing as gender ideology. Homophobic rant. She should be ashamed of herself. She's not really a Tory. I mean, this guy's called Andrew Boff. So he is a leader, he's a chair, I believe, of the London Assembly as a Conservative. And him, first of all, he says specifically, OK, right, this this is a homophobic rant. When it's not, it's a transphobic rant, although homophobia, transphobia, these things always kind of all coalesce together. And there's plenty of homophobia coming out of Swella Bravman, given, well, I would say necessarily homophobia, but definitely the dog whistle homophobia that she's been engaging in with regards to the uh, migration scenario. And the same arguments we're getting against trans people now, the same things that we got against against gay people in the 1980s during the AIDS crisis. So this is definitely nothing new that we've seen here. He's made a heckle, but he's been taken by literal police, right? The party of free speech getting literal fuzz to come in and remove people, not even heckling, but just making a comment about there not being no such thing as gender ideology. And then he's saying, well, she's not a Tory. And I'm like, yes, she is. She's obviously a Tory. She's exactly a Tory. This is conservatism. This is what conservatism is. This is what you signed up to when you stood for the Conservative Party. There are plenty of people out here trying to claim the, the Conservative Party has now become a progressive party in the post David Cameron era. And I'm like, no, no, they were just essentially virtue signaling to try and gain votes because they never believed in this ever. The fact that gay marriage passed only did so because of Labour votes, not even Conservative votes. So the idea that this is like the real Conservative Party is nonsense. The real Conservative Party is transphobic, is homophobic. You look at the gigantic applause that her anti-trans comments got at the conference. Like the, the idea that this is anything to do with conservatism being not trans, it's not, it's a complete nonsense point for him to make. And he should really look at what he said. The fact that the LGBT conservatives on Twitter have just been under huge amounts of attack, rightly so, from people calling them out as being collaborators. That's what they are. There's nothing else that you can describe these people as other than collaborators. They have been collaborating with groups of people who are trying to take away our rights. It's as simple as that. You are collaborators. You can say, oh, we don't believe in this stuff. We don't. Be, your party elected those people to be in the power and they're the ones that are implementing legislation. And do they talk about opposing this? I mean, at least Andrew Boff has come out and said, this is bad, this is nonsense, this is homophobia, right? I'll give him that. I'll give him at least he is speaking out against it. When has uh, the LGBT conservative Twitter account, of course this entire conference, decided to actually you know, repudiate anything that's been said here? And in fact, they have been the opposite. They've been thinking that it's horrendous that they're getting called out for being supportive and collaborative with this anti-trans movement, where essentially they took, they made this joke tweet comparing one of their MPs, Tom Tugendhat, to this, to this drag queen, who then quote tweeted them saying, delete this picture of me, you absolute ladder pulling, community disgracing bunch of ghouls, ban all conversion therapy, protect all refugees, stop your baseless culture on drag artists and trans people and then maybe you realize that lgbt conservative is not is an oxymoron based and true and then they got all offended by this by saying tweet deleted because we are polite however being an lgbt plus conservative is not an oxymoron being lgbt plus doesn't mean you have to support labor or left-wing politics there's no rule book on how to be lgbt plus straight people aren't told what to think we shouldn't be either i'm sorry right you're supporting a party that is explicitly repudiating our civil rights explicitly and outwardly doing so you don't have to support labor or indeed left-wing politics you can be as a libertarian as you like on the economy but conservative politics right not just classical liberal politics but conservative politics will always be a return to tradition it will always be a repudiation of progressivism it will always be anti-lgbt plus it's as simple as that they may give a lip service to try and win elections but none of these people believe in this really and truly and you're deluding yourself to think so insulting people is also no way to change their minds you should be able to make your argument without insulting us personally or telling us that we disgrace our community i'm sorry if you support social policy that's anti-gay and anti trans you are collaborators and you do disgrace the community you can think freely that you want to take away our rights but we are if we are correct to call you a disgrace to the community if you support things that materially disadvantage us there was also a bunch of chin wagging on this one a load of prevaricating over the fact that that there were tories that were thrown out of gay bars in manchester over the course of the conference they were saying i can't believe that conservatives got thrown out of bars for just for being conservative i believe it was a gay bar as well um this is alby amancona talking about this on gb news let me find the link well this is what I mean when I say it happens from both sides. So as, as he's mentioned, I'm on the board of the LGBT Conservatives. I'm the vice chairman for outreach. And I collaborator. You are a collaborator. I was having a conversation with one of our members earlier on at our stand-up conference just down from here. He was telling me about how he and a bunch of um, gay conservatives went to a gay bar in Manchester. I believe it was called the New Union Bar. And there was a drag act which was on that was making lots of rude and derogatory comments about conservatives and about... Suella 
good. Rave them in and making them feel very uncomfortable in this venue. And apparently some of the other patrons in the venue were being quite uh, aggressive and rude and unkind towards them. And then they decided that they were going to stay and have their drinks, even though they were getting all of this abuse held at them. And then about half an hour later, out of absolutely nowhere, four security guards walked up to them and physically threw them out of the bar. Yeah, welcome to the free market, right? They have made an interest, a business decision in their own personal interests to ensure that they maximise their patronage by ensuring that people who are, who people don't want to be around, namely conservatives, are not allowed to be there. It's a simple, you know, a simple, uh, rational, self-interested decision from a business. I can't believe, as a free marketer, that you disagree with that. Hmm. Very, very strange. Turns out, apparently, somebody threw a drink over somebody, but even if that wasn't the case, I'd be happy to kick them out for being Tories. I don't give a shit. Fuck it. Right? Again, you disgrace the community. You actively support people who try and take up our rights and, and that fight against our interests, then tough shit. We'll hate you for it and we'll, we'll kick you out. You're not welcome. You people are not fucking welcome. They McCarthy'd us, right? They McCarthy'd us on the left for decades and decades and decades. And finally, they're getting a taste of their own medicine. You want to be part of this community, then show some actual political support. They say, oh, why are you bringing politics into this? The LGBT plus community will always be a political community until we have the same rights as everybody else. Until we have a society that is free from homophobia and transphobia, we will re require there to be our, com our community and our existence to be political. It's as simple as that. And if you undermine that by using your politics to take away our rights, then we'll fight against you and we'll call you exactly what you are, which is disgraceful to the community. Physically, manhandled them and wow. threw them out of this bar. I just think that's absolutely appalling that these places, they say they want diversity, but not diversity of thought. We're not diversity of, of people's opinions on the civil rights of the queer community. Like, that's one thing, that's one red line that we have. If you want to take away our rights, then we'll hate you for it. Like, I'm sorry, it's just the truth. And they're chucking people out just for being conservatives. It's yeah, it's fine, good. I, I hope that happens more often. You, should be, you people should be persona non grata within the entirety of the LGBT plus community. It's as simple as that. It's as simple as that. So uh, Andrew Boff did have a discussion about this on Channel 4 News. Worth, it, worth watching. The reason I went, and, you know, old timers like me who've been to enough conferences, you tend not to spend much time actually in the conference. Uh, hall itself. It's about meeting other people. Um, but I'd seen reports of what Suella had said. And, you know, I, I, I don't even always believe what I've read on social media. So I thought, well, I'm going to listen myself to what, what she's saying, because I think that everybody should do that rather than re reacting to a headline that happens to get tweeted. Um, and, and I listened to what she said, and it horrified me. Um, not just on the LGBT issue, but this, this again, um, vilification of asylum seekers, people who are, you know, who are coming here for, to have a better life. Uh, well, welcome to the party that you joined me. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm really glad that someone's come out here and said that this isn't on, that this is completely unacceptable. But are you, why have you just been ignoring what your party have been doing and saying for ages? Like, you have to live in another planet to be completely removed from this. I guess he's in London where people are more kind of metropolitan progressive. I guess that might be true. But even so, like, he says, oh, I don't believe what I read online. Like, these are just the same people just with the anonymity to be able to say what they really think. Um, and it just seems, it just seems cruel. Uh, and it looks like bullying. And I never, th never thought we were that kind of party. And I still don't think that we are that kind of party. You are like that's you, like you are that kind of party. That's exactly what you are. I'm sorry. I can't, I can't give you any other benefit of the doubt anymore. It's very clear. It's very clear that that is the party that you joined, the party that you supported, and the party they got elected, and the party that stands to push the dial against trans and gay people. It's as simple as that. All Tories are scum. It's just to what degree? I mean, that's something I definitely always believe. <laughs> to be fair, but what did he? What did he think that they believed in? Like, I, I just genuinely have no idea where he'd get to the point where he just didn't think that was the case. It's absolutely wild to me that he'd think that. Another person who seems to be very surprised at this is a Conservative MP for Bishop Auckland, Dana Davison, who is bisexual, another member of the LGBT plus community who is a Conservative MP. Suddenly, again, she had an interview on Politics Show where she also said that she didn't realise that leopards would eventually come for her face as well. Let's have a look. You're quite vocal and public about your identity as a bisexual woman. Yes. How do you feel about this? Yeah, exactly. Do these people even know about Section 28? Like, that's a Conservative policy that lasted decades. It, say the semantics or the attitude of some of your fellow MPs towards LGBT people, particularly trans people? It's disgusting. It is absolutely disgusting. There's no other way to put it. I'd say that to their faces if we were discussing it in person. Um, 
The entire LGBT community has faced a really difficult history um, and so much adversity over the years. Um, in, in some ways, I feel really lucky that I had a really positive reception to coming out when if you went back 20 years, others wouldn't have. They'd have had a vitriolic reception um, in Parliament, but across the country as well. Um, we've still got a long way to go. And I think with the trans community, I was been quite devastated to see the recent polling come out that shows that the public's kind of attitude towards the trans You got what you wanted, mate. You literally got what you wanted. You people just continue to support a party that was driving this narrative for a very, very long time. Is the the political wing of transphobia at this point alongside a political consensus from the Labour Party who refuse to repudiate it because they're terrified of their own shadows. Trans community is going backwards. Um, I think one of the problems there is that these debates around single sex spaces, about trans uh, participation in sport get so inflamed by both sides, I have to say. Yeah, true. The, the real people to blame here is the fact that we can't just find a sensible, sensible centrist compromise between civil rights and no civil rights. Um, people on each side are really passionate but then you miss all of the people in the middle who want to take a really sensible approach um, and I think that's most people most people don't really care how other people live they want people to be free to live and love however they like um, as long as it's not like negatively impacting them and their lives I think that's the attitude of most people in this country we are such a brilliantly tolerant country um, but on the the trans debate we just need to be sensible we need to take the heat yeah and the sensible people are the trans people who are making reasoned arguments grounded in actual statistics and empiricism rather than these high Hyper, even on the people who think that they're being objective, they're just taking these like hyper out of touch, slippery slope arguments with no basis in reality, given the things being proposed are similar to things that happen in other countries and have been for a long time that have not led to any of this scaremongering that's come out of the conservatives and the, the gender criticals around things like single sex spaces. Out of that debate in Parliament and across society um, and you know certain comments that I, I know are the ones you're referring to absolutely do not help. Well, you, well done, well done you, linking yourself up to this movement. Well done for collaborating with this. That's what you are. You're a collaborator. You're literally a collaborator. How else can I describe people like this other than just collaborators? For these people, it really is like if the Tories aren't 100% explicit and say we hate gay people, then they somehow believe it's unfounded. Yeah, exactly. ContraPoints make this, makes this case in her most recent video about JK Rowling, right? If someone that wants to have a discussion with you about what is or is not transphobic, right? Or whether someone is, is being, has been transphobic or saying transphobic things, you've got to ask them, okay, you don't think they're being transphobic. What, what would cross the line for you actually being transphobic, okay? Because in most of these people's minds, unless you outwardly say, I, th I hate trans people, or words to that effect, they just think that there's some kind of level of plausible deniability. And I'm just like, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Unless we call this shit out from the source rather than waiting for people to be explicit, we'll just get completely undermined by dog whistles. The right wing are amazing at dog whistles. We all know about the Southern strategy and the forced busing comments from the old um, kind of Southern strategy senator from the 1960s, right? They know that they can't be out in the things that they believe so they have to use dog whistle they have to use euphemism they have to smuggle in their put their positions without being explicit so that eventually people will buy the, the non-explicit points and you'll be able to start saying the explicit points and that's what's been happening over the last five years essentially as a combination of conservative politicians and the conservative press wanting to manufacture consent against trans people broadly in society it's, it's horrific it's really horrific and these people are just again they're just collaborators again Andrew Boff I can at least he was there to repudiate it right I not, would not usually be this forgiving for a conservative but the fact that he outwardly came out in the middle of the speech to repudiate it is more than we've seen from basically every other conservative every other conservative anyone in the lgbt plus community who joins the conservative party thinking it's a safe place is clearly too thick and ignorant not look at their history remember how hideous they were treated gay men during the aids crisis the party in the tabloids i mean the thing is it's, they may look, i don't think they're thick and ignorant i think that they are fundamentally again it just shows how class beats up all of those things right beats on everything in the people who are from ethnic minority backgrounds will join in on the explicit policy that kowtows to racist narratives that tries to embolden racists in our society because they know that as long as they protect their class interests they're going to be happy and the same is true of the lgbt community as well where gay toys will think it's fine i'm looking out for my class interests i'm insulated from these problems therefore i can ally with people who don't support a bunch of my civil rights they'll do this all the time they will continually do this all the time and how many times will they have to have their face eaten by the leopards before they realize their gigantic mistake and this is why class is so important right it's why class has to be at the head of our intersection analysis i'm not a class reduction I believe in intersectionality but class has to be at the forefront of the way we discuss all the great different intersections as well because it's so important understanding how people like um, Dana Davison and Swella Bradman can get to their positions as people from the LGBT plus and or ethnic minority communities simple as that